Hi everyone, so in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to make this cute little gift box. Um, it has domed edges on the side. It measures 3 and 5 eighths by 1 and 5 eighths by 1 and a half inches high, um, which is 9.2 centimeters by 4.1 centimeters by 3.8 centimeters. I'll try to put everything down below as well. Um, so I was trying to think of a box that I could make for my sister that does beauty products like bath bombs and uh, lip balms and I could make her cute little boxes that she could use as gift sets for craft shows. So singing lip balms would be a perfect size for this. Um, I saw this tutorial and I tweaked it a little bit using products I had um, from a UK designer and I'll link her video down below because it was very good. Um, but I f saw this tutorial that it would be awesome for lip balm. She could put paper shred in the bottom and people could reuse the box with this brad closure. I also made it um, with a Velcro closure, which it was good in theory, but uh, especially if we were gonna be mass producing these for craft shows, it gets a little bit expensive with Velcro. Um, and I think actually the brad is a better price and it's also better with durability for it because after a while um, the corner of the um, one with the velcro you're gonna have to pull it up and it's gonna be like kind of bent depending on what type of cardstock you use so I think from now on I'm just gonna make the ones with the brads it looks a little bit cuter and um, it's a little bit easier to make in my opinion I'm gonna show you both options um, in the video though I'm gonna be using Flutter Bloom Paper Stack by Craftsmith. This is one of those hot buy pads that are like $5 from my goals, um, but it had a lot of bright, pretty, summery um, patterns, and you can get four boxes out of your one 12 by 12 sheet. So that means you need a um, piece of paper that is six inches by six inches, which is 15 and a quarter by 15 and a quarter centimeters. You do need an envelope punch board, either like the Stampin' Up! one, or this one is the We Are Memories. And you just want to put it to one and a half or 3.8 centimeters. And you want to punch and score. Rotate it, move it over to three inches, which is 7.6 centimeters, and punch and score. And again, back to one and a half, punch and score, and back to three inches. All right, so that's all the scoring that you need to do, and this is what you should have. Um, maybe you can see the score lines a little bit better. There should be four. And for each side, we're going to need two little punches, two valleys. So I made it, um, it was easier for me to start on the smaller side. You have two smaller points and two larger points on your sheet of paper. And starting on one of the smaller edges, you want to take the score line that is coming directly down from that and you just want to punch. You should have the paper like this on the scoreboard with the two bigger sides um, and then the smaller sides like that. It goes to about three and an eighth um, on the scoreboard, but just line up the score lines. For the next one, you just rotate it. You can find the score line. Um, it's a little bit harder to see on this patterned paper with the lighting, but it lines up about to four and a half inches and you just want to punch. You do that again to the other sides, you'll rotate it, it's like three and an eighth and then back to four and a half. But just follow the score lines and this is what you should have. So I'm just gonna round the corners cause I like that look a little bit better and I like that it's built into um, the punch board. So now you just want to fold and uh, burnish down the sides on the score lines. You can use a bone folder, but for the uh, cardstock I was using, it wasn't really necessary. So now on the four little flaps, you can tell they're um, sectioned off with the score lines. You're just going to cut up to that long horizontal score line and I like to wedge it when I'm making boxes because it makes it a, a little bit easier to put things together. So you're going to do that on each line on each side of those flaps. You want to do it um, with the bigger triangles up and down and the smaller ones going left to right when you're holding the paper. 
Okay, so now that you have it wedged, um, and you can see this is how it's going to fold together. We just need to glue it and assemble it. It's going to be like a, um, I'm trying to think, it's like the gable boxes or something like that. But the easiest way I found to put the adhesive um, is just on the four little tabs that you just cut around. Um, you're going to put on adhesive of your choosing on that. I'm just using a quick dry adhesive from Scotch. I also used a Tombow adhesive on some and I used glue dots on another. They all worked pretty well. But for the sake of the video, um, I'm going to show you with the Scotch because it's white. It'll show up a little bit better than um, the glue dots would. But you can use whatever um, adhesive you like or like your ATG gun, something like that. So you just want to put adhesive on each of those four little flaps. All right, and you're just gonna fold up to the corners and press and hold, depending on what adhesive you used. And it should form together, just flush up against each other. And then you just fold in each of the little tabs and press them down on each side. And you can just press it down on flat surface to try to set the glue. Depends on what adhesive you use, um, but this quick dry is pretty um, fast to set as well as the Tombow. So I always like to fold down the flap. Um, there's no crease line, so that's how it's domed, but I like to fold the box together to see how it's going to go. Um, and then you have your two options. The first I'm going to show you is the Velcro. I just got these little Velcro adhesive dots from Michaels. And the easiest way I did it was um, my inside of the box is white. So the white fabric-y side of the Velcro piece, I adhered that to the inside. And then I took the rougher edge one, attached it to it, but kept the sticky side on the outside. Um, so then when I closed the box where I wanted it, the other part would stick. I did use a little uh, piercer tool to make sure the clear part was going to stick to the box. Um, and that's only the first time. Then it opens and closes um, very nicely. So now I'm going to show you how to do it with the brad. Um, in the video that I got the inspiration from, they had a, um, I think it was a Stampin' Up! punch that was like a petal, and they used a different type of brad like a candy dot. Um, I just used a normal hole punch and a small little bread that I had from Michael's Recollections. Um, so I just punched the hole and folded it over to where um, I wanted the box to shut. And then I just took a pen to mark uh, in the center of where the hole was punched for where I was going to put the bread. Uh, you don't want to put it too low, but you want to put it in the middle of where your hole punches so it will catch it when the brad is there. So I just used a um, piercing tool to poke a hole through it and I put my brad through. You don't want to put the brad so flush up against the paper because um, then it will be too tight and there won't be enough room for the paper to catch with the hole punch. I did go back, um, I didn't show this on video, but I did go back and I put a little white label sticker. It was just a little dot so you wouldn't see the inside of the brad. Um, you don't have to do it, but I think it gave it a little bit more of a finished look. So then you can just close it and that's it. That's all you have to do. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and I'll see you in my next video.